So maybe for people who are mostly familiar with microservices, could you maybe describe what does it mean to have a micro front-end architecture? Yeah, so usually when you take all microservices, you start to look at your subdomain. So you take a complex platform and you divide them in smaller problems. For instance, let's take Netflix that probably everyone knows. You think in Netflix, obviously, you don't just watch some content. You have like customer support. You have a possibility to change subscription type. You can pay with PayPal or credit card. And all these parts contribute to the final platform, to the final domain. Obviously, you cannot take all that in one go. You need to start to slice those boundaries and divide them in subdomains. And then inside these subdomains, you have what is called bounded context, where you identify some areas that can be taken in isolation. The same thing happened on the front end. So if you look at the front end side, imagine like the Netflix website. What you usually do as a new user, you go to the landing page. Then if you like the offering, you go to the sign up journey. And then during the sign up flow, when you finish that, you go to the catalog and you start to watch content. So just with this free, you can easily identify potentially three different user flows. The first one is for the users that are going to Netflix and trying to understand what the service is. And maybe they stop there and maybe they don't care because it's not fulfilling what they're looking for. And therefore they stop there. Second step is signing up. Usually you have one part for your personal data and you share your email address, first name and last name, and then a second part for your subscription type and payment. So those things, for instance, can be bundled together because if I'm a user, what I'm doing is first understanding if I like the offering, if I like the offering, I move forward. But when I have done this and I'm convinced about subscribing, I'm an authenticated user, it's unlikely that I'm going to the landing page or to the sign up page. The reasoning behind that is trying to create some context and some experiences, if you want, for the users that will allow the user to download the code only for that specific experience. Obviously, if he wants to download more, hey, happy days, you can do that. But that's the initial idea. Obviously, later on, we discover that you can even go more granular. So there are situations where for large organization, especially, you start to have microphone tents in the same view, because in reality, there are situations where you have multiple teams or you have a microphone tent that can be reusable across multiple views. So in both cases, having microphone tents that are smaller, fine grain compared to a more larger grain solution is definitely a possibility. So at the end, microphone tents are what I call a representation of a business subdomain. And we should differentiate them from components because components are solving technical problems. So I want to reuse the specific functionality in multiple places of my code base. But the microphone test is that you're looking from the product side. You start to look at how you can create value, you can generate value in isolation for your users. And that's basically where we stand at the moment with microphone tests. So in terms of applicability to technology, is it only for web-based front end? Can you also apply it to uh, mobile devices, native, hybrid? Yeah, so it's an architecture. So therefore, it's not bounded to a specific technology. We apply on web and TV devices, not all of them, but some of them therefore living room devices, and the outcome was positive. On mobile, we didn't because we were working with native technologies. And back in the days, we didn't spend too much time on revamping that because the application was running very well. Therefore, we didn't need to review that part. I would say, yes, it's applicable also on mobile. So if you're using React Native or other solutions, yes, you can definitely think about this. The only challenge that you have on mobile, that's a discussion I had with quite a few people, is that the nature of web usually is that you are online by design. So if you want to consume a website, you need to be online. On mobile, you need to think also on the offline experience. So if you start with an empty package, if you want, and you have an empty application as loaded by study, you are composing everything, that could be an idea. But if you think about creating a smooth user experience, Potentially, you need also to think on downloading these microphone tents and storing inside the device, or maybe having just a bare minimum set that will allow the user to have a decent offline experience. And then you have, let's say, something more to think about. I think it's totally doable, but at the same time, you have more to think about because obviously the nature of the experience there is offline and online, and sometimes offline first. Personally, I'm quite annoying when I play games that you can only play online because maybe you are doing commute and you are in the tube in London and you don't have connection for any given reason. Therefore, I want to play my favorite game, but I cannot. So we need to think also about this stuff. It's not just showing a nice page saying, oh, please connect to the internet because sometimes you cannot.
Speaking about different teams, different companies these days, right? They are all in different situations. Some are still working on monolith, either backend and frontend. Some are using single page application, backend for frontend and different devices and all that. When should we actually start thinking about micro frontends? Is that a turning point in a particular situation within the team or maybe challenges in terms of traffic or a situational about the company that we should start thinking about micro frontends? Yeah, absolutely. Let's start answering with one thing that I truly believe. Micro frontends are not a silver bullet. Uh, I'm not here advocating that we should migrate every workload to micro frontends because that's definitely is not suitable for many companies. I think there are some turning points where, for instance, you have large organizations with many teams that are working on the same code base, and you want to create independent teams that could work at their own piece. That is definitely the best case for micro frontends. Another situation that I have seen micro frontends working well is with multi-tier applications, where, for instance, you are offering a SaaS service and you want to have multiple modules. You create similar infrastructure for all your customers. But at the end, you always have a part that you need to modularize. So therefore, you can say, let's assume you have 10 micro frontends, nine of them remain the same, and one can be customizable for a specific customer. That is another thing that I have discovered alongside this journey. I have the fortune to interview and speak with people all over the world that are embracing this technique. That's also why I'm spending a lot of time advocating that. In reality, to be honest with you, I think in architecture, you always find uh, trade-offs. There isn't best practices because best practices are based on a context. And if you don't understand the context, you cannot replicate the best practice because it could work very well in one company, but not in another. Therefore, in my opinion, microphone tents are a very interesting approach that should work alongside single page application, Jamstack, or server-side rendering applications. It should be used with cautious because obviously it's providing also some pitfalls you start to create multiple CI CD pipelines. You need to have a strong observability a strategy behind that. So all the things that we have seen with microservices are also true for microphone tents because the reality of the things is you have similar things. So you have distributed systems that have similar problems and similar benefits as well. Therefore, as long as your benefits in your specific context are overcoming the drawbacks, definitely is a good approach. But sometimes I saw people that currently are taking this wave of microphone tents and just using it in smaller projects. And they are creating, in my opinion, a lot of overhead for nothing because the reality, they won't be able to leverage the benefits provided by microphone tents because obviously the small team can achieve independence and modularity also with just good code practices because encapsulation and everything that we have learned in the past with design patterns and can be applicable easily also with two or three teams working together in the same code base. Microfrontends are moving that to the next level, especially when you have distributed teams, you want to reduce communication overhead across teams and you want to create independent teams. But obviously this has to be reflected also in the organization structure. So the moment that you are using microservices and microfrontends, you need also to decentralize the decision making. So the domain expert, now the developers, should take certain decisions and making certain calls inside certain boundaries. And the boundaries usually are defined by the tech leadership, either platform team or architects, principal, and so on. Instead of dictating things, in my opinion, should enabling the teams to do their job properly. And they create the boundaries where they should operate because they have a decent knowledge of the big picture. Obviously, the other activity that those people should do is facing patterns that are happening inside the team. So for instance, if a specific team is solving a problem and that the architect or the tech leader, or the principal knows that another team is facing similar problems, maybe taking that pattern, creating the opportunity for sharing and see if they can reuse the same approach. It definitely could be a new activity that these kind of people should do because they should own the big picture and allow the team to make their own decision. I truly believe that the VOPS model where you build it, you own it, you run it is the right way when you embrace distributed systems because otherwise you create external bottlenecks that are basically frustrating the team and not allowing the company to get the main benefits of these architectures.